we're going to continue with some videos that we're making that may help you make some more informed trading decisions. Uh, if you like this kind of video, please make sure to subscribe, like, comment, and share. We really appreciate your feedback. Now let's get started on the topic of today. We're going to examine uh, the leverage and the funding rate levels in the crypto markets. So uh, recently, we've actually seen a, um, a relatively large spike in funding rates in the crypto markets, the funding rates that are um, given by perpetual uh, swaps uh, on Bitcoin and other cryptos. And we've even seen the uh, lending rates in places like Bitfinex uh, go up quite significantly in the past week. So for example, in Bitfinex, the US dollar funding rate uh, prices or the rates were around one basis points daily about a week ago, and currently they've more than doubled to about two basis points daily. Uh, this is still going to look very cheap versus some of the funding uh, rates uh, the shorts do receive uh, in Bitcoin and other cryptos. So for example, if we look at OKEX over here, um, which is the blue um, blue icons uh, towards your uh, your left, uh, we could see about uh, about a week ago, um, OKEX was paying about one and a half basis points uh, per eight hours, um, and now they've uh, been reaching levels closer to nine basis points. Uh, this is about a six-fold uh, increase in the funding rates. Uh, if you examine the other ones um, on on these um, uh, Twitter. Um, uh, graphics, uh, we can see that for a lot of them, the rates have actually increased uh, rather measurably. So why is this actually occurring? So one obvious thing uh, that we do look at that will increase this is is a, is a real correlation uh, to, to the rise in the prices of uh, cryptocurrencies. And and this is namely uh, also has to do with basically the increase in the total market capitalization of all the cryptocurrencies out there. So a week ago, the total capitalization was standing around one uh, between 1.4 and 1.5 trillion. And now these levels have actually surpassed that at 1.7 trillion. So there has been about a $300 billion increase in the market capitalization of all the cryptocurrencies. Uh, this is actually quite a huge, um, a huge increase. Um, a lot of it has come in Bitcoin, but also a lot has come from um, introduction of uh, new coins. Um, it has also come from uh, also the rise in prices and, and many other tokens and coins as well. Uh, but in order for this market capitalization to to increase, it's either coming partly from a rise in price in in, uh, in, in leveraged longs. Um, or it's coming also from basically outright um, alongs. That's money coming in and buying these coins one for one. It's, it's a combination of both. So the way we can kind of tell is, is that is the inflows of money keeping up with, um, or rather the inflows of fiat is keeping up with the increase in the market capitalization. So let's keep in mind that the market capitalization has increased by $300 billion in the past week. Uh, here uh, we're looking again at coin market cap and basically the market cap uh, cap market total market cap uh, capitalization of tether in the past week. So you can see with tether according to coin market cap that the tether market capitalization the amount of tether that's probably been um, been outstanding has moved from uh, just around 36.4 or 5 billion to about just a shade under 30. 38 uh, billion dollars. So this is an increase of one and a half uh, billion dollars, uh, quite a bit. Um, but this is uh, you know less than even one percent of increase uh, from the uh, total market capitalization of all cryptocurrencies. So we're we're seeing not that much, relatively not that much net inflow of stable coins, which is kind of used to uh, as the you know. The con what I call the contra accounting currency uh, for for all of crypto. So um, we we see that maybe Tether hasn't had a lot of uh, increase in in money uh, relative to the increase in the market capitalization of crypto. So let's take a look at other coins as well. Uh, when we now look at the USD coin or USDC. Um, Again, uh, what we do see is, is that there is an increase in the market capitalization or the increase in the outstanding. It's gone from about, let's call it 8.6 uh, 
uh, billion uh, last week to about $9.2 billion. But again, this is about $600 million. It really doesn't move the needle versus the total um, increase in the crypto market capitalization. Now, you know, the capitalization is, is um, you know, based on the prices uh, multiplied by, by the outstanding. So yes, uh, not all the money is, you know, being uh, the marginal money that's put in you might not necessarily need a lot uh, to go in to push the market capitalization higher. You could do it on lower volume, thus you can do it on you know uh, lower capital inflows, but but still the amount of volume and the capitalization you can you, you can it, it's pretty safe to say that that the movement in the market capitalization on all crypto has kind of outstripped uh, what you would expect with the inflows. Again, we'll take a look at uh, Binance Coin. We do see a, a measurable increase in in the market capitalization or the outstanding, uh, maybe about two point nine billion, uh, all the way up to three point two. But again, when you add all this together, we're we're still seeing less than a one percent increase in the stable coins um, versus the the amount of um, crypto uh, currency or all the coins and token capitalization that's gone up. So this really, I would really suspect in that case that basically um, the the whole market is, is really trying to make the market go up uh, using leverage, uh, really more more than um, uh, really just buying one one for one, and and it kind of makes sense, right? Everyone wants a little bit of uh, a gearing. Uh, let's take a look at another um, a stable coin uh, TUSD is another example. In this in this case, you're even seeing uh, uh, the the total uh, outstanding coins to be even even less. So <clears throat> from that perspective, um, we, we can definitely tell that um, you know, all all in it, it hasn't been a lot of money money uh, or fiat flow coming in. Uh, so I can I can suspect that there the whole crypto market is very very hungry. Or fiat at this point, and that's why we can see very high um, uh, borrowing rates, either through perpetuals, futures, or even in straight lending protocols. So, um, is there any ways to kind of get long um, exposure in coins without having to possibly pay a lot? Um, yeah, there's a couple of ways uh, you can do this. Um, in this case, I'll highlight uh, one thing. Uh, which is the Bitflyer Lightning FX, uh, which you can, if you're lucky enough to, to be able to get a, an account with this Japanese exchange, uh, these Bitflyer Lightning swaps, even though they do trade at a premium, uh, they pay a, a fixed, uh, a fixed uh, rate every day of four basis points to be long. And on top of that, their clamp rates are quite wide. So you may be able to actually find what is kind of like very cheap uh, implied uh, funding uh, by buying these uh, as opposed to um, borrowing money elsewhere to to go long, especially in, in the case of Bitcoin. So um, there is, you know, may have to trade the foreign exchange, <clears throat> but overall, this could be a quite an interesting thing, especially for those lucky enough to have an account with Bitflyer. Okay, thank you. I hope you enjoyed our video and I hope you will join us uh, again at another time. Okay, thanks.